Hey everyone, in this video I'll teach you how I use my Microsoft Surface Pro 8 to teach math. If you're new here, my name is Olivier and I'm a certified math and physics teacher in Ontario who is currently doing a master's in statistics at Carleton University. I wanted this video to really focus on the technology aspect of the Surface and not necessarily the physical setup, so I made another video for this physical setup, so make sure to check that one out. The first thing I would do when I'm teaching math is that, let's say I have a PDF of questions or something like this. In this case, we'll consider the math test I created for teachers. I'll put the link in the description below. Is I'll put the questions into OneNote because OneNote, Microsoft OneNote is the tool I use to teach math mostly. And I use a surface because I can write in OneNote and it's handwritten and for math that's very useful. So the first thing I can do is I can take a screenshot. To do so, I can click on the pen. If I tap once, it opens the screenshot. So then I'm using the pen to select this area and then I'll hover down to OneNote. I've already prepared a page. And then I can click here and then press Control V or I can also right click and then press Paste. And then you see that my question appears. Now that I have a question in OneNote, let's go get another one. So we want to prepare. So this time, instead of doing clicking on the pen, I'll click on the Windows button, Shift button, and then S, and hold them all at the same time. And then we'll uh, select Q6 with our mouse. And then we can see that we have another question. I'll just go down here. And then I have my two questions ready to go. And that's pretty much what I do to prepare for a math lecture. I put all my questions. If I want to insert more space, you can just go draw. And then this thing, insert or remove extra space. You see that, for example, if I put it down here, it puts the question down. Whatever, I just make sure my view is at 100. That puts the zoom. If you want the page width to fit, you can click on this thing. But usually I try to keep it at 100 if you want lines. You can add lines and whatever. I just usually use none. And that's pretty much it. For this question, I might want to add a Desmos visualization in advance. So I'll just head over to Desmos and show you how you can do that. Awesome. So now that I have my graph in Desmos, let's put the question. So then you can hover on the split screen thing. And then that's a new feature of Windows 11. It's pretty cool. I'll go, I want the Desmos to be on the left and I want the questions, which is the internet tab to be on the right. So let's get rid of this thing. And then I have my question and I can zoom out maybe to see the entire question. So I have my Desmos graph on the left, the, the, the question on the right, and then let's prepare our graph. So we have a car has traveled 20 kilometers out of a trip of 500 kilometers in total. The car maintains a speed of 90 kilometers per hour. After traveling three hours and 45 minutes, how much further does the car have to travel to reach its de destination? So for example, we might want a position time graph, which would look something like this. So P of T, maybe I'll put small P is equal to 20 because that's the initial position. And then it has a speed of 90, so plus 90, and then that's clicks per hour, so time will be in hours. So you can see that we have a straight line, but we might want to fix this graph a little bit and make it pretty, so I'll just do that right now. Perfect. So now that we have a nice graph in Desmos, we could save it, but more easily we can just share it. So we'll copy the link in OneNote. So I can go in my question two here, hover down, copy paste. And then you see that automatically when it copy paste, it embeds it, which is a good thing when you're in OneNote, but then when you don't want, or when you're exporting, then the students won't be able to access your graph. So what I do usually is I put the graph at the bottom 
like this and then I can undo it and then it just keeps the graph. That way when you have the link, the students can access the graph by just entering those letters after the default link. So then when you're teaching, you can access this interactive visualization and it's often a nice thing to do. The last thing I would do to prep here is to copy paste this page and make it a solutions page and a questions page. So that way you'll always have the blank questions if you want to reuse them next year and whatever, and just update a new solutions page every time for every time you teach this specific material. So now let's move on to the next part of the video where we're actually going to learn how I teach using the surface and we'll use Google meets in this case. So if we go back to our setup, we, I created a small Google meets here and let's say we want to share our screen. I already put it in the default grid. If you forgot how to do that, you just hover over the full screen and then click on here. It, it will put it there and we're done with the Desmo. So let's leave it at that. And we could also export an image using Desmos. I'll link to the Desmos video, but now let's head over to OneNote and let's uh, split our screen, our OneNote screen, okay? So we want it to be here. So now we have a good teaching setup. We have the Google Meets on the left, on the right, and the OneNote on the left. I'll go present now. Uh, you could do your entire screen, but that's not ideal. So we'll go your window. And then let's go into the, do the work in uh, OneNote and then share. So that way you see that you're sharing the OneNote. So that's, that's nice. And I'll just do hide. And let's say you want to have the chat open. You can just hover down here, panels, in call messages. And then that way you have the chat open. So I wanna give myself a little bit of extra room. I don't need to see this. So what I can do is I can just put it this way. That way you have access to the chat. If you don't like splitting screen, usually what I would do is I would personally connect two screens. So again, you'll see more in the physical setup. So then I can have a full screen with the OneNote on my surface and then the chat open on my phone or on a tablet or on another second monitor. So here now I can go in OneNote. I can go view, make sure I'm 100%. So now this is the part where I would actually teach in OneNote. So you just head over to the draw section of OneNote and I use the slim pen two to draw. So I'll just write out the solutions. I'll fast forward the speed so it won't take forever, but you'll still get an idea of how I draw in and teach using the OneNote app. Therefore, there's 142, I'll just write in black here. So there's 142.5 kilometers left. And as always, we like to do our dot, 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 a nice clear answer. Maybe we can even highlight it to make sure it's obvious where our answer is. And that's how much, how many kilometers there are left. I'm not sure if I did the math right, but I'm sure you'll figure it out. You, but now we can explore this using Desmos. So you see how you can embed this visualization right in OneNote. And for example, let's say I just, uh, maybe I wanna just make it go forward. And then let's go, let's press play. And then you see that after 3.75 hours, you're somewhere here. And it makes about sense that you're at 357 after, and I think it even says it. So let's go stop it at uh, 3.75. You have um, 357.5 kilometers left after 3.75 hours. That makes sense. And the leftover between the red line and the height here is 142.5. And you can also access the link. So you could click here when I export this in the PDF. 
Speaking of PDF, let's learn how to do this. So you just hover to share, you click on share, you can invite the people, the specific addresses. And I think when you have the business or school version, you can create classrooms with all of this. So you don't even need to do this. Uh, you might not even need to share. It might be done automatically. But let's say you're using something like Brightspace or any other learning management tools. What you can do is you go to the three dots, hit print. And from here, you see that you have two pages, one for each question. That's pretty good. Looks good. And then I want to print this. So let's do this. You hover down there, hit print. And once you selected the folder that you want, you can save it as a file name. So let's do uh, surface or surface pro eight demo. And it saves as a PDF. I hit enter or click save. And then you can see the little printer at the bottom right here that it says pending. Make sure you don't close one note while it's printing. It might take 10 seconds or so. Obviously it takes a longer time for bigger documents, but it's usually pretty quick. And then once you have a PDF, you can go open it up in your file explorer. And then once we've done that, you can see I have SP8 here. You can open it by default is Microsoft Edge. I'll use Microsoft Edge. I actually quite like the Microsoft Edge for browsing PDFs. And you can see that this thing looks really good. Obviously you can't click on the links, which is why we included this one. And it looks pretty good. And then when you print, you could also add an image if you're really picky, but it's good enough. From this PDF, you could send it by email to your specific students, or you could upload it to your website or your learning management system, whatever works for you. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have, you're probably gonna enjoy the other videos I created, so make sure to check those out. They should appear on the screen. The best way to support the channel is to share this video with your friends. You can also do all the YouTube things like subscribe, hit the bell icon, like this video, leave comments. All those things are much appreciated. Thank you for watching and until next time, we'll do the work.